Tuesday, January 14th is called to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments? Seeing none, the next item is the approval of the December 10th school board minutes. Are there any changes? No. And they stand approved. The next item is comments. Um, by the high school and middle school representatives. Middle school reps, why don't you go first? Hi, I'm Katie D. And um, some of our things that are coming up is on February 7th, there's a seventh and eighth grade dance, which will be DJed by Chuck Berry. The student council had a wonderful day at St. Joseph's College with other Triple C student council members. And we had a wonderful assembly on leadership, which was led by Mike Weber, who was very inspiring. Um, the girls' basketball season just ended. The eighth grade ended with seven wins and four losses. Um, the seventh grade ended with one win, and the expansion team also had one win. And the boys' basketball has just started, and it's going to be the same designed schedule as the girls' was. There's going to be an eighth grade team, a seventh grade team, and an expansion team. Hi, I'm Caitlin Wendell, and um, we're trying to set up a roller skate, um, a social roller skating at Happy Wheels because two of the socials have been canceled, and it's for the fifth and sixth graders, and we're trying to get it for Thursday, the 23rd. And um, we donated $125 to a Memorial Middle School student. He has an inoperable brain tumor, and the Memorial Middle School Student Council sent us a letter asking for $50, but we tried to help out as much as we can, and that came from our student council fund. And um, the seventh and eighth graders are starting their science projects, and the open house will be March 26th. And Elizabeth Geyer won our school-wide geography bee, and that's it. Great, thank you. Are there any questions? <coughs> thank you. High school rep? Hi, I'm Matt Lunt. Um, in the drama department, um, the dining room had its final performance on Sunday afternoon, and all three of the performances went off without a hitch. And I personally think the students did an excellent job on it. Um, next semester, the students in theater workshop will begin work on a one-act play that they will take to the um, districts. and. There will be performance dates. The performance dates have been set for some time in March, as well as dates for the musical in um, May 30th, 31st, and June 1st and 2nd. Um, there was uh, the winter concert, uh, which included performances by the symphonic and concert bands and the chorus. And that was probably one of the best concerts that Cape Elizabeth has seen in quite a while. Um, the sports teams are doing very well, um, and we're approaching the postseason meets and playoff games. So we're looking forward to that. And as far as uh, student council activities are concerned, there's going to be a meeting this Friday concerning um, communications between the school board and the student council. So I'll keep you posted on that. Thanks. Great, thanks. Are there any questions? Can I just make a comment? Yeah. I wanted to congratulate the, the um, young people who were in the dining room. I went to the Sunday performance and I thought Matt did a sterling job and as well as everybody else in the cast. Thank you. The next item is communications and I just wanted to remind everyone again to come to the podium and state their name when they speak. And um, if you'd like to be recognized to speak on an issue on the agenda, you just need to raise your hand. Um, are there other communications? 
Keith? I just want to restate uh, my congratulations uh, for the high school music groups as well as the uh, middle school music groups. Their winter concerts were really, really came off great. I, I also understand that the, win the, the high school concerts also played for the student body. How did that go? Was that a, that's great, yeah. Great, thank you. Any other communications? Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Cynthia? First item is election timeline. And we have three seats available on the school board. Uh, three people who have to ante up again and they chance to lead the district into the year 2000. Um, the timeline is the filing period is Wednesday, February 12th to Monday, March 24th. <clears throat> and you filed here with the with the town clerk. So hopefully everyone will give that serious consideration. Uh, feedback from Staff Development Day. As you know, we had Staff Development Days on the 2nd and 3rd of January, and I've read all of the evaluation sheets that came back from the staff members, and they were basically very positive. I wanted to read one section from the um, arts group because it sort of encapsulated the comments that came from most of the other groups. It says, the K-12 arts teachers have never in the six years I have taught here had the opportunity to get together as a group and discuss topics specific to our discipline. We ended up having animated exchanges regarding the special creative needs for our students here at Cape. It was helpful to have teachers from every grade be able to share their particular observations about the age groups they teach. I think this helped others to learn and to think more about how what they teach impacts beyond just the grade level they are assigned. And that was a very strong statement from all of the groups, that the opportunity to meet on a K-12 basis was uh, strongly encouraged to be a, a repeat kind of situation. We also had feedback in terms of timing of staff development. Everyone said more, and there was not necessary consensus as to whether full days or afternoons or whatever, but everyone said that there need to be not only these two days, but more time to do this. Um, the science group in particular had some feedback, and Tom, you want to speak to that a little bit? I guess I'll operate under the adage of striking when the iron is hot rather than haste makes waste. The, uh, the science committee um, spent a day and a half working together, and uh, the first day we worked intensely with people from the Learning Center in Scarborough, Andy Vale and uh, Monique Culbertson, to analyze um, specific units uh, against state and national standards. The second day, the group broke up into uh, a curriculum group and kind of a benchmark group and a self-styled -sty steering committee. As a representative of the steering committee tonight, um, the group wanted to thank the board for the opportunity to meet and discuss uh, curriculum K through 12. But this group in particular uh, had some concerns about the status of the science curriculum in Cape Elizabeth. And rather than um, let the process go on without uh, volunteering to help, Ingrid Stressinger from Pond Cove, Steve Price from the middle school, and uh, Carrie Curtis uh, have met as a group with me uh, twice early in the morning to see if we can direct the energy that came out of the uh, meeting two weeks ago. Um, I won't keep you long except to say I'm available any time to speak about the standards. What, what we'd like to do uh, in a nutshell is this is um, have the school board look over and perhaps adopt at a later board meeting Maine's curriculum framework for math and science. For your information, it is pegged to the then learning results and to national standards in science and math. I brought one copy tonight, which I can circulate here, and if you'd like six more, I'm sure I can get six more. So. Um, the second part of our proposal, and sometimes things fall into our lap, is to have more teachers trained in the use of that framework. I found out from the Learning Center that they have a grant to train teachers, uh, interested teachers in this area. They will come to uh, uh, Cape Elizabeth and train between 15 and 30 people on standards, on standards-based instruction, and on assessment with that. Um, the implications for us if we do this is we're going to find out there are gaps and overlaps in the curriculum. Charlie's smiling. And uh, what we'll have to do is then, then see what we'll need for teacher training and materials and, and supplies. Um, the training is free, but the cost to the school system would be release time for teachers. And personally, I think it's a real bargain. It's a two-day session 
with the commitment from each of the 15 to 30 teachers, I'm sure we can get 15 to come back and try the lessons in their class and uh, work on their colleagues a little bit. This group, which is meeting uh, on their own about once a week, is serving as kind of a communication hub, too, to let this, uh, the teachers of science, mostly science, but some math, too, in all the three buildings, about let, let them know where we're going. Um, we would like to continue to meet from now until June, use the work that comes back out of the training, and try to pick some core topics to work on this year, meet again over the summer, and then uh, with f further feedback from the staff, try to pick some core curriculum topics to try again next year, and at the same time, string these together so we can finally say we have a, a science curriculum at Cape Elizabeth. We, we've learned from our colleagues at Scarborough that by waiting a little bit until the frameworks were done, the learning results are almost in cement, we, we haven't entirely wasted our time. We, we can peg our curriculum to those things and not have to go through <coughs> all the exercises that Scarborough has. What we'll find is, though, we'll need more teacher training and we will, you'll be hearing, I think, from each building about supplies and materials and, and more staff development. So that, that's the offer from these interested staff people, and I, I personally thank them. As you can see, I'm diverting some of my energy from the NSF grant to, to this, but a lot of these things from the NSF, uh, the former NSF grant, um, fit in very well. I'd say as an aside, too, that um, the people who worked on the NSF grant met again yesterday, and yes, we are going to resubmit that grant, and we are looking around for other sources of funding, including an uh, interesting offer from Toyota. We were imagining the implications of that. We could buy a van with Toyota on it or something. So. Um, other members of the committee, are, the self-style committee are here and people who worked on it. I don't know if they want to add or subtract anything from what I've said. And I wouldn't want you to think that science is the only group that has carried right. on. Some but of the, the other groups are carrying on and have asked perhaps to talk with the board later in the, in the spring, and so obviously we'll give them that opportunity. This is almost an opportunity that we can't refuse, I think. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for your work and really thank the teachers. I really for thank them a lot. And yeah. if you need six more copies of the framework, let yeah. me know. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Moving on to technology. As, as Jay comes up, I did want to say that the, <laughs> I want you to stop here. the technology component of the staff development days were very highly acclaimed. And so we have the person in person tonight to give his report. For those of you who uh, are not them, my name is Jay Cavarro. I've been the technology resource in the school district since July. And uh, I want to remind you that it was a little over two years ago when the uh, district wide technology committee came back to this board with a report and a plan recommending uh, the implementation of steps around technology in the district. It was a little over a year ago when the first update of that plan was done about the implementation and such. And I'm here tonight to give you uh, a brief report. so far this year on the recommendations in that plan. Uh, <clears throat> some of you have seen this in, in documents you see earlier when I put it up here who don't have a copy. Uh, each, of the, uh, <clears throat> each of the plan's original recommendations I've tried to break down to different components here as I explained. That's a side effect, right? <laughs> <laughs> Blissfully low tech. By the way, I can't say enough for the students we have around here. They do a lot for tech. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, one of the major components of the plan was to build a community-wide network, okay? Uh, we started out, the committee started out last spring and engaged, uh, at that time, Coastal Computer, now CBEA, to design a, a uh, school department and community-wide uh, technology network. That design was, uh, was completed this fall, but I started meeting with the, uh, the lead designers back in July, looking at the pieces we knew were pretty standard and we could begin to implement right away, and we began to act on that. Since that time, the, as I said, the plan has been completed and delivered, and we've been working very hard on the implementation of that plan. What it'll mean this year in terms of implementation? Right now at the high school, uh, labs and offices, infrastructure is in progress, those items will be completed this year. 
At the middle school, the labs and offices infrastructure itself is complete. We're now working on network services that are being developed, including email, internet protocol services, print services and such. We're bringing those up on the network. At Pond Cove, the lab infrastructure is in progress. In fact, it was in progress today, a lot of that time. And uh, we will then add network services to that. Uh, at that point, the, the networking goals for this year, the implementation for year two, uh, will be essentially complete. Another item of recommendation in the initial, initial plan, and I think in the plan it was called a computer in every classroom, one of the recommendations. I've called it computer deployment, uh, in, in other words, here. Uh, and as we look at things today, at the middle school, that deployment is, is essentially complete. And, and I use the word essentially uh, to give myself a little bit of room. Clearly, there's a unit here or there that's going to need replacement and such. But I think we can say, not necessarily state of the art, but almost everywhere, we do have technology in place. The same is true at Pond Cove. The work there has taken place over the past two years. And by and large, we have technology uh, throughout the building. We're still working on the network piece to connect it together, but it's there. The high school at the lab level, and even though the technology is kind of old, at, at the uh, office level has technology there. But it's the one area in the district where we are clearly incomplete at the classroom level in terms of the technology. That's where we stand today. Another recommendation was a coherent, comprehensive, regular maintenance policy. To be, to be implemented over a period of time. What we've done this year, it's interesting. Part of it is by design, and part of it is, is, is kind of an evolution, I've discovered. We have an interesting mosaic that's happening. And by the way, it's, I, I do a lot of this type of stuff with Eric, because I see him a lot. We've been increasingly relying on a student group. We have some young people in this district, as you well know, who have, who have wonderful skills. We should use them. Uh, first of all, it has some real practical advantages in terms of costs and such. Secondly, I think it's wonderful in terms of students having some ownership in the resources we're putting together. And thirdly, it's good maintenance. It works. Another item we've begun to bring together, we've, we've have some third party contracts. And uh, not all of them are contracts, but they are probably rather minimal when you look at the overall expense. We call on them as, as needed. Uh, we also have third party volunteers. I, I have to tell you today, uh, David Pratt, who resides here in town, is head of uh, computer networking at SMTC. His students have donated countless hours of time in, in putting this network together for us. They have been wonderful. Uh, certainly a third party contact that David and I are going to talk about futures and such. Uh, uh, it's been a wonderful resource for us. I've done a lot of triage work in this process. You know, I've, I've, I've targeted one group and another and tried to get the most appropriate, most cost effective resource where it needs to be at a particular given time in the process. And finally, I don't, I don't think I can say enough for our classroom level employees. We, we have employees in this district who work in technology rich spaces. They may be media centers, they may be labs, whatever else. These people shoulder a lot of the day to day technology work. And I don't think any of us could, could function in this district without their efforts. But it is becoming a mosaic of a maintenance approach. And I, I think one which can function very effectively. And we can talk down the line in the future. One of the things was the development of a district-wide staff position. Uh, my presence here probably indicates something about uh, where that, that particular objective stands. Uh, if any of you saw the job description along the way, I want you to know it's been very challenging. There's plenty to do. And uh, I, I shift gears many times in the day. Uh, it's been very exciting. I think the definition of the job is continuing to emerge. And taking a look at it as, as we get a little further into this year is something I plan to do with the Technology Committee and getting their feedback on the position also. Staff development. <clears throat> Looking at some of the possibilities we have coming down the line, one of the items we've added this year is an ongoing recurring electronic communications course. Uh, we would like ha staff to have a certain level of skill with some of the network services we're bringing on board. We're offering that on a regular basis. We, uh, January 2nd and 3rd, I, I have to tell you, I, I said it was fun. And, and, I, and I meant that very sincerely. I spend a lot of time with wires and boxes in this job, too much time sometimes. I spent two wonderful days with a lot of terrific people in this district. Uh, I'm still collating feedback that I collected for our part of the day. But we have, we have a wonderful group of professionals in this district who have a very keen interest in technology and they're pushing me to get resources out there that they can begin to use. One of, the, one of the recurring themes from that day for me was this. We should be doing nothing, nothing with technology independent of content and curriculum. 
We need to link it every step of the way. And that will certainly be one of the objectives uh, insofar as I'm involved in that here. We're looking at spring offerings now planned on feedback that we received at that time and a year ago. We got some good content feedback and the plan calls for piloting of programs. And that will certainly be part of the spring approach. Finally, we've been looking at administrative software. One of the issues that, that came up was mentioned initially in year one of the plan. Uh, we have software which handles a variety of administrative tasks, K8, and seems to be functioning very well. There are incompatibility issues with that software, 9 through 12. There are scheduling shortcomings in the 9 through 12 software. We've been talking to a number of different vendors. Uh, we've established the criteria. We've talked to a number of different vendors, and several presentations are ongoing in that area. And having said that, I will keep my promise to be brief and entertain any questions you have. But that's where we stand with our implementation this year. Great. Questions from the board? Thank you. Oh, I've got one. Oh, Sorry. OK. <laughs> um, one of my concerns, Jay, is trying to, we talk about all of the technology being based to content areas. But there are some certain skills that we need students to have in terms of <clears> keyboarding, <throat> knowing how to move the mouse, shut down, open up. When do we work on when that's going to happen, that every student gets there and then? Yeah, we, that, that's an area we need to address. And it's, it's you know, a, a, at least a quasi-curricular area in terms of technology right. skills that people ought to have at a certain time. And we need, we need to get the time to begin to define that. And that's a piece of work awaiting our attention, to be quite honest. Do you think that's some work that will be done? Um, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, in the not too distant future, yeah. yeah. That's what I was say. I'll, I'll tell you why. One of the things in achieving this year's goal, and goals here, by the way, and, I, and I'm really kind of hoping to have the bulk of that done by February break. Um, wires and boxes are the price I'm willing to pay to do the other things, mm -hmm. and some of them are curricular, and some of them working with staff, and, and some of them are working with young people, and that, that's a direction I'd like to move in sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Yeah. Are there other questions? Coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. We really appreciate sure. all of your hard work. Um, it's just wonderful to have you here. Thanks very much. Uh, we've been notified by Buddy Earl that he will be returning from his sabbatical in the fall, so we'll be glad to have him back. And I did have just one other item. Uh, next week, the 22nd, is School Nurse Day in Maine, and so this seems like a good opportunity to thank our school nurses for the very important contribution they make to the well-being of our schools and the well-being of our children. And I know they interact with almost every child in the system at some point in time, and we certainly do appreciate all their hard work. Great. Thank you. Um, the next item is the principal's report. We're starting with the high school tonight. Good evening. Jay, I left my overhead at home, so we'll just go with some information uh, from the podium. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make some um, announcements about the high school and then uh, recognize a couple of people uh, who will be leaving at the end of the year. First of all, our mid-year exam week will begin next Tuesday or a week from today. Uh, we will, again, schedule two exams per day. Uh, buses will run at 7 or normal morning runs, and then there will be an exam from 7.30 to 9.30, and then 10 to noon. Makeup exams will occur one uh, from 12.30 to 2. Um, the schedule goes exam one in... One in uh, Five on Tuesday, two and six on Wednesday, three and seven on Thursday, and four and eight on Friday. Hopefully the students know that, and we've been announcing it at the high school. But for parents to know that bus transportation will be available to those students who rely on the buses for transportation to and from school. Um, with that I exam week also, um, grades will be closed uh, by January 30th. And then we hope to have uh, report cards sent home on February 5th to all the high school students. Department heads are beginning to develop the uh, study guide for next year uh, with new course offerings and adjustments to the courses for next year. And also we've arranged with the eighth grade teachers and we'll be hosting eighth grade parents night on Thursday, March 6th down at the high school caf cafeteria. More information will be forthcoming to all the parents through our newsletter, but just know that that, that has been, pl in, uh, been put in place. Also, the uh, search survey, which our uh, middle school students took today, uh, we received ours uh, this afternoon, and we will be administering it during our Lighthouse program Thursday morning, first period of the day, and again, it will be given at the same time to all 135 uh, freshmen through the Lighthouse instructors. Uh, 
Lastly, the, the high school is, is in the process. I've met with department heads and we're just reviewing uh, for the board, something we'll be coming to you later with, reviewing the idea of, of credit earning uh, under our current basis. Students who are in a, a one-year course earn 10 credits at the end of the year. Semester courses are five per semester. We're looking at maybe unifying that or making it more so students, even though you're in a year course, earn five credits per semester which would give us more flexibility in scheduling and also for some of the students to pick up courses second semester and first semester. In some areas, such as math and science, that is not a doable thing, but we have found in talking with the English and social studies people or those people in the core courses, and even in foreign language, there are times when we can set up semester courses instead of year-long courses. As we get through that, I'll be, uh, we'll be doing that at a faculty meeting a week from next Monday, and then at, at that point, I'll be giving a report to the board as we proceed. Um, any questions about the high school before I mention a couple of people? First of all, Ter Terry Brower will be retiring at the end of the school year. She has been a cook at the high school for the past 15 years, and she is well noted to the students for her, her Italian cooking and homemade pastries. Uh, her finished products always reflect the great amount of pride that she puts into her work. She's a wonderful woman. And Terry has served as the cafeteria union representative and has been an active member in the Maine Food Service Association. Uh, and uh, we've been fortunate to have her at the high school. Again, we will miss Terry. Uh, the second person is Paul Jackson. Uh, Paul has been, an, as you know, an outstanding teacher from Cape uh, for 35 years. Uh, this spring, another chapter of his remarkable teaching career uh, will come to a con uh, close. Uh, a conservable guesstimate says that he has, teached, uh, he has taught over 2,700 students. That's not including all of the st students he has coached in his various sports from cross country to basketball. I've always been impressed uh, with his, his continued excitement, energy, and enjoyment that he brings to his classroom uh, and the students who have excelled in his classes. His dedication to his profession is uh, remarkable and his dedication to Cape Elizabeth. He is a man of wisdom, knowledge, and one who possesses an incredible sense of humor. Mr. Jackson will truly be missed. He once told me, this was a few years ago, he said, I will retire from teaching when I have had two bad days in a row. Well, I think reality set in, and, and Paul f realized that he couldn't go another 35 years. <laughs> so he made the decision uh, to leave at the end of this year. Uh, I will miss him as a colleague and as a friend. Uh, he has been a great contr contributor to Cape Elizabeth for 35 years. And Paul, if you're watching, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Um, Panko. I should say to Paul, if you're watching, I understand we have you down on our list of resources for next year to help us with science <laughs> curriculum. So maybe we'll give you two bad days in a row. I don't know. Um, I had hoped at this board meeting to give you a report on the team leadership institute that the team leaders were going to attend. It was scheduled for last weekend, but postponed because of the foul weather. So I'll report on that uh, next month. I hope we should be going at the end of this month. Um, in keeping with our efforts and our theme of working together, though, the Discipline Committee invited uh, Nancy Markowitz, who is a parent of Pond Cove and does conflict work professionally in uh, Portland, family conflict work, to come to a faculty meeting uh, to discuss the topic of uh, conflict management. Um, the feedback we got from faculty was very positive. Um, we worked on our own grown-up strategies of how we deal with conflict, and we hope to be able to, be able to apply those lessons to our work with children. Uh, Nancy, by the way, will be helping Sarah Berman um, with the mediation program, which will be extended, the student mediation program, which is extended down to third grade this year. The, the, train, the evening training for that starts tomorrow night. Uh, both Nancy and Dick Romeo, and there might be others I don't know about, have been very helpful getting this going. I think it's a terrific program. Um, the MEA begins for fourth grade next week, as you know. Um, I sent a letter home cautioning parents to uh, make sure that their kids get enough sleep for the next few weeks or so, but I didn't mean to discourage them from coming to the PCPA sponsored production next Tuesday night, I think it is, a day without television. It's going to run from 7 to 8 o'clock, and fourth graders are welcome to come. I don't think it'll ruin your testability the next day. <laughs> Speaking of fourth graders, uh, we were planning on a leave of absence for, uh, not a leave, but a long-term, a hiring long-term substitute for fourth grade teacher, Rachel Clark. We have accelerated that schedule a little bit, and we should be making a decision on a replacement for Rachel within the next day or two. 
Uh, finally, I'm happy to report uh, as an interim follow-up on the Odyssey of the Mind groups who have been meeting as part of their after-school work uh, and working on their problems, that they're going to be doing the public solution to their problems on Monday, March 3rd, and the snow day is March 4th. Uh, I want to thank Martha Palmer and all the parents who have been working so hard in this. I can't wait to see what the kids have done. I'll certainly send you more information about that. Is that during the school day? or It's, it's in the evening, in the um, and we, we might work something else out <coughs> beyond that, but it was uh, the coaches and the kids are going to invite their, I think their classmates and their teachers to come that night, and if there's enough interest, we might be able to do something during the day. But I, I think it's a great program, and I hope we hope it becomes an annual event. Great, thank you, Tom. Sure. Um, Nancy. Well, I thought I'd start off by saying thank you to a couple of people first, sort of reverse of, of Rick's, although we don't have any retirements to announce. Um, first of all, I would like to thank George, Beth, and Cynthia for attending a team leaders meeting with us last Tuesday. This was in response to notes from a middle school team leaders meeting back in November regarding the climate and the stress level in the building. And I think all the team leaders came away feeling that it was a good beginning. Uh, they appreciated your willingness to listen. At one time I called it a conversation, but it really wasn't a conversation in that mostly you people listened um, to people talk and a conversation, at least in my definition, has two parts to it. So we thank you very much for coming and hope to do more of that um, in the future. I thought, came away and felt it was very positive and certainly met the purposes of the meeting, that part of it was to demonstrate that we were all willing to sit down and talk together about issues. So thank you very much for taking time to do that. Further, as a member of the language arts, um, staff development group that met on January 2nd and 3rd. We'd like to thank George for his work um, with a group of teachers coming from that curriculum level, but really addressing an issue beyond just language arts and helping them see a way to define a problem and then to begin to have an open discussion with it. And he worked with um, 12 members of the language arts group on Thursday and when they came back and reported to us on Friday I know there were some things of confidentiality that they shared in their group and I think George is going to share some information with you later if he hasn't already not the confidential things but the part that they agreed they would do um, and they all were very positive and felt that was time well spent George so thank you very much for doing that we'd also like to say thank you to Don Tubbs who has um, retired as the DARE officer and he worked um, as a DARE officer in middle school for six years. He graduated his last class in December, and Cynthia was there to represent the school system. Um, Ann Swift Kayata represented the Middle School Parents Association, and the fifth grade team also recognized Don for his many years of involvement with our young people. He's been involved with um, the students at the middle school through various <laughs> other programs. I think he might have been the original officer friendly uh, back in 1971, but I, I must say that predates my arrival in Cape Elizabeth, so I'm not 100% sure, he doesn't but... mine, he was. He was? Oh, thank you, Mary. I, I knew there were people here that, that could clarify that for me. Um, and so we just really thank him for all of his efforts and his involvement with us. To bring you up in a date on a couple of middle school things and our continuing effort from the Athletic Study Committee to be sure we inform people about the rules and regulations of our teams. We have just had our boys' basketball meeting last Wednesday. It was very well attended. And we had a good meeting where we explained and went over the rules and regulations. The coaches were introduced. We answered, answered a few questions. Um, we are going to be having the second, or actually the third winter sports season meeting uh, for people who are participating in swimming and indoor track. And that will occur on January 29th at 5 p.m. in the cafetorium. We will then do one more this year for spring sports. And then we'll try to get on a cycle that um, really includes once they've been to one per year you don't need to, to keep coming back, so that we'll do that. But they, we have found them to be very positive and very well attended, so we thank that people for that. As Rick mentioned, we did give the search survey today, and I just want to share with you um, that it was very positive for our students. A couple of compliments to a teacher 
Susan Dana, and it, this just happened by chance, and she took that teachable moment. Um, it, they, we did it in our first period classes, and the article came out in the newspaper today regarding it, and Susan started off by reading that article to the students, and it really set the tone in her classroom for that this was serious and was positive and constructive, and the students took it very seriously. Um, another eighth grade teacher shared that in her class you could have heard a pin drop because the student said, oh, this is about us and maybe about finding out things and activities that might be good for us to be involved in. And we really think our students did take it very seriously. It was in grades six, seven, and eight. And uh, we look forward to finding some good things from the results that will help us build future programming as a community, not just as a school uh, kind of thing. At our last faculty meeting in January, we have been investigating this question. We've been trying to find the right question to investigate. Um, who we are and decide who, how we want to define ourselves as a middle school. We're going to explain a lot more of that and discuss that with you at the January 28th workshop and listen to the questions that you have and other members of the community have regarding middle level education. Uh, but we had a very energetic discussion in two groups. One group really met to sort of talk about the sometimes appearing conflict between high standards and self-esteem. Um, is that a conflict? Is it not a conflict? And really, what's the issue? And also, um, structure of the student day. After we gathered all our information, we've really talked about that. People really kind of talked about the same thing. And at our uh, faculty meeting next week, we'll be talking about what's a proper balance in a middle school. We'll be talking about it. I'm not here guaranteeing we'll have an answer to that question. Uh, but we will begin to explore the possibilities of what we think the answer might be. We do look forward to the January 28th workshop. Uh, we are coming with some information, but also ready to listen to the questions that people have um, about the middle school. We have a goal for ourselves that by our March faculty meeting, we would be really able to answer what is it we really believe in in middle level education <laughs> that we can all operate with um, and move forward. We need a guiding relook at our, our vision for that to, to help us focus on some things. One of the things we are also interested in is establishing a committee of a custodian, um, teachers, parents, and students in regarding pride in the building, not just the physical structure, but to address the physical structure and other things. So far, we have three faculty volunteers for that committee, and we'll look forward to producing more and to maybe meet for a day, and similar to just developing things where people can say, we take care of this place, and we're proud to be members of this school community. Progress reports go out on Friday. That's sort of a reminder for families that you should be looking for those. We will have attached to the progress reports just an update of important dates in the middle school. Um, we have phoned in our information to uh, 767 CAPE twice. Um, we keep calling the number, and you can punch our number, and it says there is no news from the middle school. But I understand from Scott that, that soon there will be news plugged in there from the middle school. Um, and I think that will be another way to help people communicate and find out just those dates that sometimes middle level students forget to tell people. And just on a note as we end, um, today I had a conversation with Paul Jackson because I've been waiting for this day. It's been my pleasure to work with Paul on several support teams and other committees throughout the year. The years, not just this year, but the years. And um, since he was going to have all this time next year, I wanted to be sure that I was one of the first people that got in on his volunteer schedule. And uh, he did agree to, I, I think it was a firm commitment. He might have thought it was a tentative agreement, but I think it was a firm commitment to agree to volunteer and help in coaching some of our newer middle level teachers in science next year. So we look forward to our continued work with Paul Jackson in the future. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Um, the next item on the agenda is committee reports and the Finance Committee. Charlie? Uh, the Finance Committee met at 6.30 in the Chamber's Conference Room. Uh, we reviewed the appro appropriations report, discussed, discussed overages. Uh, we signed the warrants. We reviewed the school lunch income statements from the state, and we actually looked at two months' worth. We, uh, the revised current year state subsidy is actually 3000 over what we had budgeted, so we had a little bit of a windfall little bit in change. Um, we also received school bus purchase approval from the state. Um, the bus eight is to be replaced by the new school bus and this put us, puts us one bus ahead on our replacement schedule. Um, Dr. Miles uh, discussed the Portland Arts Technology High School 
uh, budget for the for the year 67, six, 97, 98. It's kind of centered around the review of the video technology startup cost allocation. Um, PAS is proposing a new program called video technology. Um, in the budget proposal in December, it was recommended that all the participating <coughs> um, districts would share equally in the cost, therefore would share equally in the participation of students that would go. One of the bylaws of PAS is that if any one school district does not approve the budget, the budget has to be re-reviewed re and re-presented. Pre pre uh, the re-presented budget was again to promote the video technology startup program, but to to allocate it on the, the cost of the percent of participation, which means that our cost, the cost to us will be less, but our participation in allocation of students to that program will be less. It'll be what we have now. Uh, we will vote, take a vote action under new business, and we did some follow-up budget discussions. Thank you, Charlie. Um, the next committee is the Technology Committee. Is there a reporter? Have you met? Actually, neither one of us. I think we're at the meeting. We do have Jay, who would, li <laughs> who would like to report on the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, could you come up to the mic, please? <laughs> Thanks. The, uh, the Technology Committee did meet uh, the third Tuesday of last month, uh, as it does every month. And uh, the primary item on the agenda, we uh, we took a look at the preliminary budget work that we had begun doing in that process and uh, spent some time going over that. It was a rather brief meeting, was not the largest group we had there, uh, to be sure. And we began to set some, set some goals looking toward this spring, a couple of which I mentioned uh, in, in some of the work around staff development such uh, in my earlier presentation. Uh, we have a meeting, uh, we concluded after about one hour, and uh, we, have, we have a meeting next, next week. Great, thank, thank you, Jack. Sure. Uh, the next committee is the Athletic Study Committee, which isn't really meeting right now, but the Athletic Steering Committee is meeting next Tuesday, a week from today, at 4 p.m. in the high school conference room. And any members of the public are welcome to attend, and that is looking at presenting a budget for the overall athletic program. Is there anything else to add, Ann, on the Steering Committee? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, the next committee is the Policy Committee. Yeah. Yes, we met uh, December 12th and reviewed the three policies that I will be discussing this evening for second readings and um, wrote a draft for the interrupted study and the foreign exchange student study, uh, foreign exchange student policy uh, for first readings tonight. We will be meeting this Thursday on January 16th at 7.45 a.m. and Sharon Merrill from High School Guidance and Lyle Kramer Middle School Guidance and Tom Eismeyer have been invited to uh, sit with the policy committee to discuss assessments in our system. And, and anyone is welcome. Great, thank you, Gail. Uh, the next is the Pool Study Committee. Gail again. Yes, we have not had an official meeting of the um, Pool Study Committee since my last report. However, we did meet as a school board with the town council last Tuesday evening. And at that time, Harriman Associates uh, presented a number of scenarios um, for our pool, our high school pool, presented estimated costs on some repairs, showed us the um, violations that we are going to be addressing. Um, and we have a, an expanded pool committee now established that will include the uh, town council chair and school board chair and the standing pool study committee. Harriman Associates will be meeting with us. This meeting will be next Wednesday at 3.30 and at that time we will um, look at where we are and what the reaction was from town council and ha what we will be proposing as um, a direction to, to take. 
it was approved at the joint meeting last week that we would have a, a core study done of the concrete under um, decking, decking uh, to find out how much chlorine has uh, leached through and what kind of um, deterioration we, we are facing there. We also are going to have approved the money to um, bring our existing building or pool site up to code with fire, um, to fire and lighting, emergency lighting. Um, and that is the only money that has been approved and that was um, going to be coming out of town council funds or municipal funds. Um, so we are moving ahead, but um, we have serious problems and we're going to be addressing them and bringing them for the public. Just one other point with the pool. It, the pool was a very well built pool and it really has served its time well. And we are just getting to the point where it has um, lived its life and it's just time to relook at it and make the repairs needed or whatever the town chooses to do. But it, it was a very well built state of the art building when it was built and they did stress that too. I guess I'll add one more part okay. to that. Then. When we say pool, we, we're not necessarily talking about the tank that holds the water, that seems to be pretty good. It's everything else in that building that seems to have um, aged and has uh, corroded, corroded with, um, as far as the locker rooms and the mechanical system and the lighting and. Great, thank you, Gail. Uh, the Superintendent Search Committee, Ann? Can, I, can I just make one, I think, clarification on what you said about um, the funding for the immediate repairs. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've actually, the town council has actually voted on that yet. I think they're voting on it in February at their meeting, um, just so we're clear that that wasn't actually approved at our joint meeting. I think it's still coming up. They, you know, they just might want us to be clear about that. Great, thank you, Ann. Superintendent Search? Yes. Thank I'm happy to report that we've had um, approximately 50 people uh, write or call in for um, the application forms um, for superintendent, which is way, way beyond uh, where we were last year. Um, so that's, that's a very good sign. Um, the deadline for applications being returned to us is January 27th. Um, after that time, the school board will be meeting to winnow those down to a group of 8 to 12. Uh, semi-finalists who will come here uh, to be interviewed um, that and that committee as I've said before will be made up of school board members um, administrators um, and also two teachers and two community members um, I know Cynthia Moles has been uh, soliciting uh, volunteers among the teachers and um, I, I hope everybody in the community be, will be watching for the Cape Courier uh, coming out this weekend, there will be an article about um, how you apply if, you, if you're a community m member who wants to serve on this committee. You just have to be, you know, a, a resident of the town. Um, there is um, an, an intense period uh, of time you've got to really kind of be owned by us. Um, the weeks of uh, February 24th and March 1st, um, when we'll be doing a whole lot of interviews. So basically, um, those are the two qualifications. Um, but there will be information in the article about how you apply. Basically, you just have to write a, a short note to the superintendent, and we'll go through those and, and, uh, and pick two people. Um, so I really encourage people to, to think about, about that. It's an interesting process and kind of fun to be part of. And um, I think that's where we stand right now. Oh, excuse me. No, we need to, um, I passed out to you again, uh, the form from last year on superintendent qualifications. Um, personally, I thought we're still looking for someone who walks on water and all that kind of thing. And if you have all had a chance to review it, if you're comfortable with it, I think these are just the criteria we'll use again. And uh, again, if people you know, we sent out this form with the superintendent qualifications, asked people to kind of rank them last year. If anybody is interested in seeing these again, we can certainly get them through the superintendent's office. Great. Thank you, Ann. Yep. Uh, the next is the research committee. We have not had a meeting. We are scheduled to have a meeting next Thursday um, at 3 o'clock in the chamber. Thank you. Town, call, town yeah. council chamber. Town council. <laughs> I have it down for tomorrow. You have it down for tomorrow? 
Ah, uh, Shari, is it, it tomorrow or no. Thursday? It was, it's the 30th. It was changed to the 30th. So it's been changed yet again, right? I think the so. The Research Strand Committee meeting, do you know the date? It, 30th, you're correct. The 30th? The 30th. It's the 30th. Right. It's not tomorrow. Not, not tomorrow, week. not next week, the, the 30th. 30th. Right. Great, thank you. The next committee is the Reading Committee, and they have not met again, and they plan to meet, I think it is February 5th, Wednesday at noon at the Middle School Conference Room. And the Arts Committee. Uh, the Arts Committee met yesterday with a, a, a small group, a short meeting. We discussed uh, the teacher workshop on the second and third and worked on just getting reactions from the teachers and the effectiveness of the day. Uh, the general feeling, I think, was it's very worthwhile. And as, as the superintendent uh, read the note earlier, uh, it's nice to get the people in the same area together once in a while to talk about what they're doing. Uh, one, one point that I think came out of the meeting is, uh, as a school board and administration, I don't think we were prepared well enough to, in specifying a format for what the result was going to be for the day. Uh, I think a lot of good work was done, but I don't think that we had a, a clear, or we set a clear goal as to what we were looking for to be accomplished, at least certainly not in the arts uh, area. Uh, and uh, one of the, the uh, goals of the arts committee over the next few weeks is to compile uh, what was done and uh, have to, and we're, we're deciding on a format as to what the arts curriculum is going to look like. And, uh, uh, maybe we need some sort of systemic approach to just the general what what the actual uh, product will look like and how it's going to read. Uh, uh, the days I think were very uh, very helpful and very useful, and we need more more teacher workshop days. Great, thanks, Keith. I know that having staff development committee be next on the agenda. We did try to let each group sort of define what they wanted to get accomplished that day, but we definitely wanted notes and things reported back, which I assume Cynthia has, that we will then be able to see. Um, but a lot of different curriculum areas had different goals for the day. Um, and we did work Certainly. with all of the facilitators to try to get them to articulate those so that there was a feeling of an end product. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we all keep learning. <laughs> Um, Staff Development Committee, uh, George, did you want to say anything about your workshop with the language arts group? I think that Nancy commented on it. I, I thought it to be a very productive day. I think it was, in some ways, um, uh, people need to understand that <clears throat> a couple of months ago we looked at an issue of the 11th grade uh, English class and appropriating money to add another section. Um, that was done uh, with the contingency that that problem um, or that issue would be studied in depth and uh, in many ways it was the uh, that language art group that kind of piloted a process to um, to look at a problem and try to get to the root cause of a problem and I think that in many ways um, uh, we did just that uh, we did training the initial part of the, the day uh, that was probably uh, less well received than the afternoon which was a little bit less uh, uh, structured although I think that the, the early part of the day sort of set the tone for how we would uh, um, organize our discussion later in the day. Uh, it, was, it was very productive and I, I believe that um, there will be an, an initiative coming forward uh, as a result of the work done by that group. Great, well thank you George for your time doing that. Um, anything else? Well, I just wanted to recognize the people who were the group leaders for the seven groups that we had. In language arts, it was Nancy Hutton and Sally Martin. Math was Elaine Brownell. Science, Tom Eismeyer and Steve Prince. Social studies, Gail Packer and Phil Jewett. Foreign languages was Judy Liberty and Suzanne Janelle. Health, phys ed, et cetera, et cetera, was Pam Vos and Katie Lisa. And in the arts, Mary Hart and Rebecca Wing. And they all worked very hard and met with us many times, so yeah. we appreciate their time. Great. Thank you. Anne? Are, are we going to be getting copies of the notes from those meetings? I think we did last year, and those were really fun. Yeah, I think we need, the committee needs to meet and try to pull that all together and right. do something. Great. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, Paz? Cynthia? Um, <clears throat> Paz met January 7th. It was an unscheduled meeting, and it was called because the, the budget had been not, had been turned down by one school committee. 
Um, again, it was just to go over the revised uh, format, which we will vote on later. Great. Thanks, Charlie. And the last committee report is the joint meeting with the town council, which was last Tuesday. We spent about an hour discussing the pool issues. Um, then we went on and looked at the budget picture, the revenues um, that the town is projecting and what we are projecting of getting from the state. We also looked at a facilities manager position, which we um, all agreed to in concept, which should be coming out in the next budget on the town side. It would be a person who would be responsible for all of the town buildings and coming up with long-term maintenance plans. Um, it's something we really look forward to, especially because it was one of the major recommendations from the School Service Delivery Option Committee, which we'll hear about in a minute. But we are pleased to say that that is already in, pro in progress. And we talked a little bit about student recognition with the town council, and um, we had a report from the CAPE Coalition. I don't think there was anything else. Great. Joe? It was one other thing. We are going to be meeting with Scarborough's oh, Town right. Council and School Board. It will be a joint meeting of our school board and Town Council with the Scarborough School Board and Town Council, and that is scheduled for Wednesday the 29th, maybe, of January, and it will take place in Scarborough, I think, at their town hall. And we're still setting up what the agenda will be for that, but certainly the one town concept and working together and some other um, issues. Great. Um, the last, next item is unfinished business and policy second reading. Gail? Yes, I'd like to start with um, policy IJNDB, the Electronic Communication System Access. And is it appropriate for me to table that? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'd like to propose that we table this so that Jay um, and I will be able to meet and, and address some of the concerns that, was, that have been brought up to our attention um, in the time since we have received our packets. And essentially, um, the object objections have not been to the content, um, but to some of the wording and asking that we um, elaborate on some of the um, items that are under this so that we will be fully covered and that everyone will fully understand what the implications are of internet use. Great. Anything and that else? that will be taken up. When oh, will be taken yes. Up. And we will have this um, return to you before the workshop on Jan January 28th, and hopefully we'll be able to have it voted on at that time. Right. So that it will be in place for um, Jay and the schools to right. use. So we'll have a short business meeting just prior to the presentation on the middle school. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. yeah. We um, actually had a teacher who's very interested in the that policy because um, the person wants to get their science class on the internet as a class, just as the policy is designed to enable one to do. And we had asked the person to wait until the policy reading tonight. Would I be correct in assuming we now need to wait until the 28th um, to I do that? So. Yeah, and we are sorry about that, which is why we're trying to do it in two weeks, mm -hmm. which is the next time we met. But we didn't want to rush through any language right. changes that weren't quite right to meet a, a quick, immediate need. But right. we I, I think most people do understand that, Beth, and that in yes. the long no, term, no. It, we need to have the wording correct because this is an area that can be tricky. Um, I know that teacher will be disappointed in that group because they were hoping to, okay. to get online tomorrow, but thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we, we need a motion? Yeah. yeah. We need, uh, could I have a motion? I move it? we table. I Sorry. second that. All in favor? Seven zero. Okay, I would like to um, bring before you the homeschooling participation in school programs, IHBGA. This is essentially the MSMA um, policy that was presented to us, and it's ready for adoption. Is there any discussion? Is there a motion? I move we adopt IHBGA, homeschooling. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0.
And our last policy for second reading, ING, animals in the school. Um, there were a couple word changes from the first reading, and I think it's essentially the same policy, and I move that we adopt ING. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. The next item is the report from the School Service Delivery Study Committee. Is it study or option? <coughs> Delivery Study Committee report. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Nest. I chaired that little committee. Uh, I'm here to deliver a preliminary report. I'm going to refer to what we call the Blue Book. And uh, there's, uh, when you read it over, there's quite a few sections to it. But tonight, what I'd like to do is point out uh, a couple of pages to explain our thought process of what we came up with. One is naturally uh, the last page. Uh, one is page, this is uh, page 14. And then also the staff work comparison. Uh, I will go back to those as we go along. But that's just to show you what we had looked into. Uh, the committee would like to, first of all, uh, read our charge and then, and then tell you what we came up with as an overview only. And then the report would explain everything in detail. The purpose of the committee was uh, the committee is charged with reviewing all services necessary to support the educational mission of the community. This excludes classroom teaching, special education, and guidance. It includes such areas as accounts payable, clerical assistance, facilities management, financial management, food service, payroll, purchasing, and transportation. The final charge was the committee shall also review areas in which there might be improved collaboration between the municipal and school departments in all service areas. <coughs> We started our committee in March of last year, and we met up until December. As we went through the seven or eight categories, such as accounts payable, purchasing, transportation, we are here to report we found nothing in particular that has not been researched, has not been looked into, has not been actually accomplished as far as the school, uh, as far as the services go. And I'm in reference to, as I refer that to, when we did our research on the transportation area, uh, we went and through our staff work comparison, uh, we noted that in 1990, uh, you had a staff in, for custodians and bus services of 56,000 hours that, during one year. In 1996, you'd already cut it down to 45,000. So as far as services go, uh, it's been a super good job that's being done. And then when we checked in with other towns, <clears throat> we found, if you notice on page 14, you notice there's a little arrow that points to particular items. It says drivers for most compatible school systems do less custodial work than those, than work than do those who work with Cape Elizabeth, whose duties are split 50-50 between those responsibilities. In other words, in just that one area alone, uh, the service is right up to snuff as far as we could tell. You, you, you're doing an excellent, excellent job. We looked into the food service area. The town of Cape Elizabeth is one of the few towns that has a plus side as far as the food service goes, as far as making money as, uh, overall. And we just heard a report tonight about uh, somebody doing a good job with Italian food. I mean, so you take that person and you take that we're making money. I mean, that service was excellent. So as we went through, we, we came up with eight recommendations. And what was uh, mentioned by Elizabeth, the last recommendation, which was more in reference to, <coughs> and I'll read it again. The committee shall also review areas in which there might be improved collaboration between the municipal and school departments in all service areas. And that's where we came up with that facilities management recommendation. We felt as if, if we were looking uh, to review the services to support the community, uh, that was an area of opportunity and it 
had collaboration between the municipality and the school department. We have covered through our report, which I will not get into, all eight different categories, accounts payable, clerical assistance. I want you to know we have such a cross training, or you do, in the town of Cape Elizabeth between uh, the town and the school as far as clerical, doing payroll. I mean, there's, there was nothing that actually showed up that there was any service that could be improved upon in, in that area. So our report is here to first of all state that as far as the services necessary, you're gonna find little things here and there. Uh, that's why we ask you, we included the minutes of every single meeting that we have. Uh, I'm asking you to go to like June 4th as an example. You can read those minutes and you can pick up little things perhaps that overall you might be able to pick up on at a later date, little things, but nothing major showed up. Um, I don't know if you want uh, me to read, um, I'm a talking whiz here. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go over the eight recommendations. So well, since you have uh, the blue book in front of you, uh, I know you're gonna go and talk with the town council on under a <coughs> workshop. If at any time you'd like our committee to be there with you, hi Ann, uh, uh, we'll be more than happy to. So if you don't have any questions, uh, and I'll sit down if you have some, I'd love to answer them. I just <laughs> wanted to say you guys have done a wonderful job in reading all your minutes and all you have met a lot and found out a lot about our school system. And um, I have learned things about our system by reading this too. So Great. I really want to thank you and the whole committee for all the work you have done. The, the number one, which I, I, I appreciate that, and my committee, I, I have a couple of the members here, also Judy and Gil and Mary, uh, I have to mention their names, right? I like it. Uh, we did on our number one recommendations, which was mentioned before about the facilities manager. Uh, I am, or I would like to read that as a matter of more of a public record that we felt very strongly, and that is under a five-page report that was done by Molly. That, as you look, it will substantiate everything that we put on this number one and it reads, Cape Elizabeth is not unique in having only minimal maintenance maintained its facilities. However, facilities must be managed responsibly and must be viewed as assets rather than expenses. It is imperative that our town and school buildings be maintained for long-term visibility. The committee recommends that a facility manager be hired as an advocate for the building. This facility manager would be responsible for short and long-term, long-range planning and for implementation, implementation of the capital improvements and maintenance plans. And we put that under the category of improved collaboration between town and the school. And that was the biggest thing that showed up with our committee. Everything else, you, you should go like this to everybody because they did a super good job. We found nothing. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions, Anne? I, d I just wanna make a couple comments. First of all, this is just an, a really good resource for us to have and to have all of this in one place. You guys did a super job of really doing your research and um, I, I for one really appreciate it. And I think also um, the people in the town really need to thank a few people for why we're in such good shape here. You know, it's great to get such a positive report. And I think Connie Goldman and Sue Weatherby and Scott Poulin deserve a lot of credit because they have worked very, very, very hard over the past few years to get us in the good shape that we are. And when people were concerned about the buildings, you know, back when Connie came on, um, you know, she took, she took that seriously. She looked everywhere for every dime and every way we could save money that wouldn't deflect money um, from the educational mission. And you know, this is kind of confirmation of all the good things that have gone on in the past few years. And I think people really need to understand that. And our Thank committee you. would say ditto on that also, because uh, although when I spoke to the, the uh, uh, school board, I would also have liked to have mentioned a lot of names like Scott and Sue and stuff like that, but I didn't know it's in the report and we mentioned the names as much as we could, but I didn't know if it, but thank you, Ann, you, you helped me out. 
Thank you. Charlie? Again, thank you for your work and for the affirmation of what we're doing. Having sat here seven years ago and sat through two public meetings, one having to do with, with the way the school board was, was budgeting at that time, and also set, having sat through a public meeting where the roofs essentially fell in, it's an affirmation that we have been doing something right, and I thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. Thank Andy, you. for everybody after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered where it was. It's in my pocket. Oh, I have okay. it there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the update on the parent survey. I don't think we have an update because we have a meeting scheduled for next Wednesday morning. Unless any of the principals have any update, we haven't done any more work and we will be meeting, I think it's next Wednesday morning. Um, the next item is new business. There's policies first reading. Gail. Yeah, have to find them. Oh, here they are. Okay, I have uh, three policies that will be uh, first reading policies. The first one is the copyright compliance and when I reviewed this and Ann called it to my attention, uh, the policy actually is very confusing. And we were asked to find the guidelines from the December meeting which elaborate um, in an, specifically on the copyright policy on music printable materials, video um, software. But the copyright policy that was in your packet only covered the off-air recording and the software. So I would like to um, take this back to the policy committee and rework this policy and bring it before you at another meeting. Great. Does that need to be voted on or anything? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Just, you know, I think you should just clarify what we talked about, that maybe this policy itself should be very short, mm -hmm. saying that we intend to comply with all the laws and then just have the administrative guidelines incorporate the meat of this. This just seemed very confusing. Great. Great. Sounds good. The uh, next policy, foreign exchange students, IGBI. This um, was taken from the brochure that the high school had uh, written um, a while ago, and it has been used as guidelines for uh, the high school guidance department in accepting foreign exchange students. We have an existing policy right now in our policy book that is very short that essentially says we support a foreign exchange program and would encourage um, our high school to be participating in that. This policy that I'm bringing to you tonight is um, more specific and spells out that we'd like a full year commitment, that there's a procedure for um, students to apply to our school, the number of students that we would take each year. We recommend junior and senior year. Um, and agencies that we would prefer students um, be coming from. One uh, board member feedback was on the bottom of page one, evidence of uptake immunization and recent physical. Um, Anne felt that we needed to be more specific on how recent the physical needed to be. So I don't know how you feel about that. Well, and maybe just some places it just seemed this could be firmed up a little bit, the language, but that's me. And maybe it needs to be in English also required. What? The, the physical and the immunizations. Oh, the, the documentation of it? Just so we can read it. Mm -hmm. She's oh. saying the documentation needs to be in, a, in English so that we don't have to send it out to be interpreted. I think there are just still just a few wording things and just firming this up a little bit. Okay. Well, this will go back to the policy made. committee and we can look at it even this Thursday. But does anyone else have anything that they'd like to bring to my attention now? Oh, I just had one question about who, who's on the exchange committee that's mentioned in here. Rick, isn't that Mr. Brewington and yourself and Sharon Merrill? Right. We have a ex uh, cultural exchange uh, person who serves as the committee member with and also a school board we've a school board member we've asked to be part of which mm -hmm. which you've been there so it's the four of us that sit down and, and review um, those applicants uh, as they come in 
you know, it, just, to me, this just kind of jumped around a lot, and it was okay for the brochure, but it seemed like th this is really two things. One, how, how are you qualified, and two, what's the process for doing it? And maybe if we could just firm, the, firm those up into kind of two categories, it would be a little easier to follow, because we kind of jump around right, well, we can work what, with we're, that. what we're talking about, just so it's easier, easier to read, yeah. Okay. And we've, I mean, from the high school f standpoint, we strongly support your, your support of this, uh, these concepts because I think they're vital at this time with the in influx of, of requests for bringing in students, the cost to us, mm -hmm. and, and the assurance that, that, that it's, it's an experience that both the, stu the, the uh, students coming from the, the country and also our students will relish in both the experience and not it uh, being a, a, uh, an issue where that does not happen. So. Yeah. The final um, policy is a new policy, uh, interrupted study. It will be under JFAB, uh, under advisement from MSMA. There was no category for interrupted study, so it is under transfer of grades for traveling students. Um, this applies to our students who are seeking to have an experience in another country. Um, any feedback? I had some. Mm -hmm. um, in the second paragraph, students must write a letter of request to the school principal to leave the system to study in another location. I guess I feel like if a parent is going to move and they're going to go somewhere for six months, they really don't have to request that they do that. They can do that. But what they need to do is set up a plan to make it work. So I guess I wanted to work on that sentence. All right. Uh, my reaction is that we're not talking about a whole family going to another location. This was more designed for a student to become the exchange student while the parents stay here. But oh. perhaps we need to um, yeah, maybe that needs to be, be clear. clearer on that. Yeah. The, the other piece to that is, is that when a student may go to another uh, country in a different hemisphere or whatever, that they also understand um, the implications of returning and, and again, meeting high, our high school requirements uh, may, uh, that may be a difficulty. So it's, I think part of the request is for us to lay out the groundwork to say, if you do go, realize that there may be some, some implications about your return and how we will, tr you know, transcripts from other countries, how we will interpret that in the grade point average. Grade point I don't think it's a case of us denying it or saying, yeah, you, you can't go, but yeah. just to give so that. I think that sentence makes <clears throat> it sound like we could deny it. Yeah. Let's just work I, on that. Yeah, but that's, that was the intent of, yep. that, of that statement. Yeah. That was all I had. Any others? Well, I have some wording things if we can talk about them on Thursday. Charlie? The, the reference to the senior year, it is recommended, does this mean the board is recommending that interrupted studies mm. should not take place? I don't think the board should be recommending anything of that nature. No, that's, We're saying mean, that's an administrative that's, yeah, guideline. That's an administrative guideline. Right. Well, we can talk about that at the committee, too. I, think I understand the ramifications, but as a policy, we should not have language that says recommending. Um, other changes, comments? We will work on that one on Thursday. Thursday. The next item on the agenda you didn't have anything. No, nope. yeah. well done. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the superintendent's nomination for a co-curricular <laughs> fee position. Yes, I have one, Michael Hofheimer, who will do the spring semester art club at the high school. Are there any questions? This is an established thing. Yes. Right. It's yes. okay. Um, is there a motion? George. Make the uh, motion that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for. Uh, Michael, I'll second it. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. The next item is the consideration of the superintendent's nomination for athletic B position. Right. I have several. For the B team, seventh and eighth grade boys basketball, Wayne Bridgham. For swimming, seventh and eighth grade boys and seventh and eighth grade girls, Ben Raymond. And for middle school indoor track, Martin Keene. Any discussion? Anne? Um, Ed, this is a question for Nancy. 
I think at our last athletic committee meeting, we had talked about possibly the swimming could be combined. I, I believe did, that that didn't work. That didn't work. No, I, I believe that's why he is being nominated for both boys and girls. Yes. Right, but it's you're not, saying it's one not stipend. A, Excuse me? You're saying it's one stipend? Is yeah, I mean, I guess maybe I wasn't clear on what we were talking about. I, I, we we did thing. talk about that. Um, we talked about that because the past so few years, uh, the numbers have indicated swimming doesn't start until the 1st of February, so do we, we don't have the sign-ups yet. I okay. think that's something we would need to clarify with Keith once the sign-ups are completed. How would it be just one team or would it be... Okay, but no matter teams. what, this would be the number of hours, even if it was... Uh, those recommendations came from Keith, and in fact, I, d I don't have mine right in front of me, so I, I really would defer my question to him. Oh, boy. Um, and Keith's not here. That was my question also. Because, you is know, this, just because I, mm -hmm. I was... Do they practice no, you're, together? You're recalling the conversation right. correctly, Ian. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember the conversation, too. And over the past few years, I don't have that information in front of me, but we've had a low number of students either on the boys' team or the girls' team, and it, it flip-flops with the years because it depends upon who has the early basketball season. This year, there is the potential for having more girls on the swim team since it also coincides with boys' basketball season. Um, also, our indoor track team is about four or five years old, and over the years that has built up in participation, and some of the participants have come from what would have been on our swim team in the past. So at the Athletic Study Committee, we did discuss that perhaps we don't really have enough student involvement to warrant two coaches. Um, that you really one coach know. could do both of them. You would know when, did you think, the number? The, we're having the meeting on January 29th, and we're having it then because the swim team practices, I believe, start the first week in February. Students typically sign up the week preceding that. Well, we could table this until um, just that particular piece until our uh, Tuesday the 28th. Until the 28th, and then ask Keith for some clarification. Well, I think, yeah, because we could no, talk about it next Tuesday mm -hmm. at the meeting. Maybe we could get a little right, more so we'll put that clarification on. about this because I, I would just like to... Sure. And, and Cynthia, would you be Proof notifying right Keith to, to get some yes, clarification? Sir. Okay. So you want to table the swimming totally? Yeah. And we could address it um, at okay. your athletic you meeting and then it. vote on it on the uh, 28th. 28th, yeah. I'll withdraw that nomination pending further information. Charlie? Uh, just a clarification. I do not object to the person being no. recommended. Right. I am objecting to the amount of hours for one team for both boys and girls. Well, the confusion is whether it's two separate teams or if he would be coaching it as one joint team. Yeah, and I hear Nancy saying that she doesn't know that yet because yeah. she doesn't know the numbers. Right? But we should, right. maybe. We should look at it because the numbers overlap. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other discussion? Then could we have a motion? Priscilla? I move that we accept uh, Wayne Brigham is the uh, B team, seventh and eighth grade boys basketball, and Martin Keene is the middle school indoor track coach for the winter coaching 1996-97. Is there a second? Second. Keith, any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? 7-0. The next item are personnel issues. Um, we have a retirement of Paul Jackson, effective at the close of the year. And we heard wonderful things from Rick and Nancy. And unfortunately, I don't know Paul well, but I had a little bit to get to know him over the past two years doing teacher negotiations. And he has served the system well. He's been here 35 years, and um, I'm sure we will all miss him. Are there other comments? Sorry, Charlie? I've been on the board seven and a half years, and in seven and a half years, I have interacted with Paul and his wife, Earlene, over the, over the last, actually, 13 to 14 years. Um, two of my children have had Paul as a teacher, and one of them has had him as a coach. And I can say he is probably one of the shining stars, lights, or whatever you want to call it, in our system. He always greets you with a sense of humor. 
He's always upbeat, and I've never seen him be anything other than that to even his students. Um, he's going to be sadly missed in the system, but from what I hear, he's going to still have contacts, and that's, that's important. And I wish him the best. I know his summers are spent in golfing heaven, <laughs> and I believe he's going to be able to extend that. Um, and thank you, Paul, as a parent, and I thank you for my children, and I thank you as a board member. I'd like to add to Charlie that both my boys have had Mr. Jackson in the classroom and on the track team as a track team member, and I think almost every high school student has passed through one of his classes in physics or chemistry or math or on the field and track and other sports, and he he's just a fine, fine person and a fine teacher, and we're all the students who aren't going to have him will miss a wonderful opportunity, so I thank him also. And I'd also like to say that all the kids who come back, if they see me, they'll say, is Mr. Jackson still there? <laughs> <laughs> so he is a teacher well, well liked and well remembered. <laughs> Great. I know both of my daughters had him for physics, and they both said that the physics course they had in high school was more intense than the physics courses they had in college. Mm -hmm. And they're both in the medical field, so. Anne? I'm sorry, my, my kids will have just almost got a chance to have him, but not quite. But one, one, so I don't know him as a classroom teacher myself, but one thing that, that I've noticed over the years is how many uh, of his colleagues talk about him so positively. I mean, his name always comes up as, so, you know, as a mentor and a friend and a role model and, and just, you know. It's everything you could want, and um, I'm sure he's going to be sorely missed in those buildings. And I must say, in negotiations, he was always so much fun to deal with, a good sense of humor, and always asking the right questions, and he always had his calculator. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him always having his calculator. <laughs> um, is there a motion? Charlie. I move with regret that we accept the, uh, the retirement or resignation of Saul Jackson. Is there a second? Gail? It is for the legal purposes, it is a retirement. It's a retirement, okay. And it's effective at the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> all, those right. in, all those in favor? Seven zero. And the next item are two teacher requests, right. You have two teacher requests in your packet for unpaid leave. Um, as per the teacher's contract, those requests must come to the board, but I recommend that you approve both of them. Is there any discussion? Questions? And is there a motion? Charlie? Just a point of clarification. Um, we developed a process a couple of years ago because of this kind of a situation, and it, that's the superintendent's discretion, but there's a process. And I think you need to change the wording in your contract. <laughs> so. Is there a motion? Can I, what, can I just ask, are you referring to the days around a um, vacation? Yeah. Oh, this no, is this, is, this, is, oh, this is not that. This is the, there is a separate section that says that unpaid leaves of absences must, must go to the board. Oh, this right. is not around no, the vacation. No, oh, no, no, no. no. Those, I, those are my discretion, yes. Does, but do these also fall within those parameters no, in no. terms of the, this request? Is, this is a block of time when they need to be done. Okay. Yeah, those I can do in limited number, though. I have right. discretion, right? Okay. Is there a motion? Do I name the people? Or do you, you no, I don't. It's a personnel issue. I don't think you need right. to. So I move that we accept the two um, requests for unpaid leave. <coughs> Is there a second? <coughs> Anne, any other discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. The last item, Charlie? PADS budget? Yep. I move that we accept the PAS, which is Portland Arts and Technology High School budget for the 1997-98 our share as $5,348.38. Essentially, we would be approving the budget. This budget is only for new equipment or replacement equipment or new programming. And, and we currently send 
I think about 18 students, and those numbers have been going up every year. Okay. Is there a second, Gail? Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And I'll just announce, um, well, there's so many meetings to announce, but <laughs> I just want to um, mention the school board workshop two weeks from tonight on January 28th. It will be in the Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium. It will be on the middle school program and encourage everyone to come. And other than that, I think I won't announce all the other meetings. There are too many. <laughs> so is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? 7-0. We are adjourned. Thank you.